Now, normally, I would script this out, have something funny to say, but ain't nothing funny about what happened on the field yesterday. So after the intro, I'm gonna give you something a little different. Hey, what's up? I'm your host, Bonafide, and this is from the Cheap Seats, the show where we usually preview and recap and talk about the Tennessee Titans game that they just had on Sunday. But I'm going to do something different today. I'm not scripting this. I'm not typing it out. I'm just going to talk about that disaster of a game yesterday. Now, <clears throat> in the preview video, I talked about how we needed this game if we wanted to keep any kind of hope uh, playoffs. Now, I know that was foolish. Talk about it later. That we would even think that we would be going to the playoffs. But yesterday was a microcosm. I don't even think it's a microcosm. Is there any such thing as a macrocosm? I don't know. Look it up. But yesterday was indicative of how bad a Titans team this is. Now, I've been a Titans fan for quite some time. So it's not one of the worst Titans team we had because I didn't see some bad Titans team. A lot of these younger fans that are on that are on Twitter and Facebook that came became Titans fan when Marcus Mariota came to the team, they ain't really seen it. I seen some bad teams. I mean, yeah. So, but but this team is, is, is they're trending that way. Yesterday, on, on <laughs> yesterday was supposed to be a winnable game. You were at home. You had the crowd. This team is on the road. They lost their star and running back. They didn't, they, you had it. You know how confident I was that we were probably going to win this game on Friday? Is that the injury report for the Tennessee Titans featured no one. There was only one person on that doggone report that was listed as questionable. And that was Traylon, I'm a bus, Burks. That's it. Everybody else was healthy. We get in the game. I'm watching the game. In the first quarter, Derrick Henry already has one touchdown and 59 yards rushing. Already in the first quarter, not the first half, in the first quarter, he had like 59 yards and a touchdown. This is how you win game. You win in the game. Then we proceed to just screw the pooch. We let this man, Gardner Minshew, and, I, and look, we did exactly what I said we needed to do in the preview. We got those turnovers. We forced them into mistakes, and we could not capitalize for nothing. Now, <clears throat> this is, I, I don't even really want to rehash it, but at one point in the game, uh, we were down our starting punter, who's probably the best player on the team. Uh, Derrick Henry was in the blue medical tent, uh, accompanied to the locker room by Josh Wild, who is one of our better tight ends, because Chiga Conquo, I don't know what's wrong with that dude's hands, but yeah. And then Jeffrey Simmons also was walking to uh, uh, the injury team. So all of the best players and some of the good ones that we have uh, are all out there. Nothing. Jalen Duncan at the uh, left tackle position. Yeah, we got to get that fixed. We got to pay somebody because what he did yesterday, and I get it. He is a rookie. I understand. But he was terrible. Them boys, Obuka Kwan or whatever his name is, and EJ Speed was talking to Will Levis all day long, okay? It, it's just not. Spears was a bright spot because when Derek went down because the refs clearly missed a high-low hit on Derek Henry, which sent him into the concussion protocol. Yeah, great on that. Uh, Spears had to come in and basically <clears throat> be the only running back because we only had two running backs on the roster. I, I, <laughs> I don't even know. And I'm not even talking about the worst thing that happened yesterday. Because Derrick getting hurt was really bad. Jeffrey being hurt was really bad. But when you give up not one, but two putt blocks in the same game on back-to-back -back drives, somebody got to get fired. Because that is telling me that it is a blatant disregard for the fundamentals. Mike Vrabel gets up in this thing and he gets up in this game and he talks about, oh, we got to, you know, coach better and play better. And we do the fundamentals and that's what we got to do. And we got to stop doing stupid mistakes that hurts the team. Not being able to protect your punter 
one of the best players on your team, and now he's probably gone for a season injury injury because that leg wasn't supposed to go that way. And, and, and that's okay. And you're not going to talk about it. Man, look, I've been saying that Craig Aukerman needed to be fired a long time ago. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sick. So we're just going to try to muscle through this thing. And I also said that uh, uh, Shane Bowen needed to be jettisoned up out of here. But you know who I'm adding to the list too? And I know you're probably going to be like, oh, no, he can't do that. Tim Kelly. I, 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 you want to know how old I am when it comes to Titans. I remember Mike Heimerdinger. Now, was Mike Heimerdinger like this revolutionary type of uh, play caller? No. But he knew how to call plays. He had the feel for the game. I don't know who we got to pay or what firm we got to hire, but we got to get some freaking coordinators up in here. We, we, we do. I cannot. I sit and watch the Red Zone channel after I watch the debacle that was on it, and I'm watching teams that clearly, clearly have an offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator that know how to call plays. Tim Kelly will only call a screen or a deep pass. A screen or a long developing route. It ain't, it ain't no in-between. We don't have no crossing game. We don't have no quick passing game. It's either a screen to, to, to Tajay or Derek or, 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 or NWI, or it's a long developing route where it's just nine routes and we go in four verts. It ain't no crossing game. We don't have tight ends moving across. You know, we don't have those natural picks. We don't have none of that. And the thing about it is, is that we get down there in the offense and then we, we start talking about it and, and we start doing it. And then guess what? We start running tricky screens. Like we, we, we running flea flickers. Like the flea flicker is supposed to be something that you use every once in a while to get a team off balance to do. We using them joints like we using it in our formation. Like we using a power toss or something like that. We using flea flicker. I, I need some, somebody in the comments. Go back through all the games because I, I I really don't want to do. It. But somebody in the comments, go back through the games and look at how many flea flickers have we done. Like, is there a PFF stat or something like that? For that? Look at how many flea flickers the Tennessee Titans have done versus the rest of the league. I don't even know if you can get that stat, but I know for a fact in the past three games, well, I don't know for a fact, but I know strongly, strongly think that we have done at least four, 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 four flea flickers. I can't even talk right now. I'm just. Four, four flea flickers in a game to generate offense. Do they work? Sometimes they do. But do they not work? Sometimes they don't. Uh, uh, but that ain't how I expect the offense to go. I get it. I get it. I get it. We got a rookie quarterback. We got a rookie left tackle. Our offensive line is trash. We really don't have no weapons at the wide receiver position outside of DeAndre Hopkins. NWI is a wide receiver three. I get it. But this ain't how it's supposed to be. It's like somebody got to take responsibility for this thing. Like, and that somebody got to be Mike Vrabel. He got to be the one. Like, if Mike Vrabel wanted to get, like, you know, I, I, I ain't trying to call for nobody's job. Yeah, yeah, I am calling for somebody's job. If Mike Vrabel wanted to get him some good graces and have people, fans, say, hey, you know what? We understand that Mike is dealing with, like, insurmountable odds. He would fire Craig Aukerman. Because special teams have been sorry all along. Look, let me tell you something. How in the world is it that you don't have a backup holder to practice in case Stone got up? I remember vividly a quote from Mike Vrabel a couple of weeks ago, a couple of, right before the season started, when he was talking about offensive tactics. He said, you want a pair and a spare. So why in the world aren't you practicing holding with Ryan Tannehill, he's the number two. Why isn't Will Levis practicing? Why isn't Malik practicing? Why, why, why don't you have another person do it? Because guess what? You lost your punter, who's on your holder. So he's doing two jobs. You lost him, and now guess what? Ryan Tannehill has to come in there and hold for X point. Do you? I want that man off my team. Because do you understand? Had we just hit that extra point, we probably win this game. This is a totally different video. This video was scripted. This video is positive, but because Ryan Tannehill can't figure out, wasn't prepared. And I, you know, I'm going to cut him some slack, but I really don't want to cut him some slack because he did it in college. He did it like that. Nick Folk never punted in the NFL, but guess what? He did it in college, and guess what he did when he came back? 
He, he did a, a freaking fantastic job punting and replaced with. But guess who didn't do a fantastic job? Ryan Tannehill holding the freaking snap. That dude got $30 million. That is a waste of money. $30 million. I, I, I can't. Let me tell you, you know what else is a waste of money? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to wrap this up because I can do this all day. But Traylon Burks is a bust. I know I had a video where I said, is it too soon to call him? That man is a bust. He is the Jamarcus Russell of wide receivers. I don't want that man on my team. I don't want to hear nothing about you no know, year three loaded. I don't care about none of that. I don't want that man. I, none of that. Because I watched that Sunday night football game. Before he got hurt, Christian Watson was out there cooking. Cooking. What we got? We ain't got nothing but some bum dude sitting on the bench collecting a check. Can't impact the game. I watched the game yesterday. When we needed a wide receiver out there, guess where he was at? On the bench. I don't care if he just got out of concussion protocol. I don't care. Yes, he's out of protocol, so that means the doctor cleared him. That means he needs to be full speed. None of this talking about, oh, we trying to break him back in. It's week 13. He don't need to be broken back in. If he ain't up to condition before then, he ain't going to be conditioned that. Nine snaps ain't going to get it done. That man is a waste of space. He need to be gone. Trade that man for a third round pick or something. Get you some more draft capital. Let somebody else deal with this on off things like that. Stop doing this crap that that well, we hold on to these players. Today. Like Brewer, why the freak do we have an undersized, undrafted free agent from an uh, undrafted center from Texas State? Come on, man. Come, come on, man. Like. Like, and you know who this all boils down to? And you can put it in the comments if you believe me or not. And I know some of you guys are going to defend him to the end. But this is all on Mike Vrabel. It's all on Mike Vrabel. I, I'm, I'm telling you. John Robinson screwed the roster. And when Mike Vrabel got here and, and, and we hired Rand, he had an opportunity to say, hey, we got to make some tough decisions. We got to do this. But this loyalty he has to these people, to these yes men, like there ain't no re... Bowens is garbage. We know that now. Bowen is garbage because when we had Jim Schwartz, Jim Schwartz, the defense was cooking. The defense was cooking. Now we got Bowen by himself again, and we looking like that same old sorry behind defense. We could cover. Nobody could cover Michael Pittman yesterday. My, I, my, I could have caught passes from Gardner Minshew as weak as that dog on secondary defense was. Look, Chris Harris, I know you thought you was going to get a, a, a defensive coordinator job after this. No, sir. You might not even get a job as a greeter at Walmart right now, the way this secondary is looking. So this is, I, I mean, this this team is pathetic. Like, it's week 13. It's week 13. We're four and eight. We're out. Of, we're not even in a little graphic where it says in the hunt. We ain't in the hunt. Like, I like Monday night, because coming up this Monday night, we play the Miami Dolphins. Yes. Those Miami Dolphins, they might score. They just got through scoring 45 points on the Washington Commanders in the Washington Commanders' own stadium. We got to go to Miami on Monday night. Them boys finna boat race us. They finna embarrass us. Like, you, I'm a Titans fan. I'm going to always be a Titans fan. But let me tell you, this game on Monday, I fear, may be close to the 59 and 0 game we played in New England. And I know that bring a lot of pain to you. But that's, I can't see it no other way. If you can't guard Michael Pittman, what makes you think you're going to guard Tyreek? Come on, man. How Ed Lover used to say, come on, son. This is going to get embarrassed. And we're going to do this without possibly three of our best players. Derek may not make it out of the concussion protocol in time for the Monday night game. Simmons might be sidelined because he had the knee injury. I don't know how much. It's, thankfully, it's not that bad, but I don't think he's going to be able to play next week because he had to come out of the game. They ruled him out that way. And Stonehouse, the punter, I, I don't, we don't even know what's wrong with him until it might come out. Bruh, Titans fans are in dire straits. Now, look, right now, now remember, remember, Mike Vrabel, like, 4-16. Four and sixteen. I we might need to get rid of this man. Might need to go start and find a new head coach. 
some that's gonna bring in some coordinators that know how to do play ball. Look at Raheem Morris in, in LA, and look at uh, uh, Steve Wilkes. Those dudes were head coaches and stuff like that. I mean, hey, we need to find. Hey, they gotta fix this. Look, I sorry for the rant. I know it ran long, but uh, yeah. Stay tuned because we're going to preview the Monday night game and we're going to talk about I, I may even do an obituary for the Monday night game because that probably be the day that the Tennessee Titans die on national TV. But if you made it this far, thanks for tuning in. Sorry for the rant, but uh, make sure you tell your, uh, your Tennessee Titans. Pre- you probably felt the same way. So make sure you tell your other fans, uh, Tennessee Titans fans, join the channel because I'm going to get to you straight. I don't, I don't really care about no stats and stuff like that or things like that. I'm going to get you straight. This, this is how I feel about it right now. Don't forget, we're doing a Road to 1K giveaway. Make sure you subscribe so you'll be entered in a chance to win the Thorless Thorless Throwback. And uh, tighten up.